Happy Sunday, everybody. Thanks for tuning in again. Well, I appreciate. I let you know I appreciate all our listeners, all the people who tune in, and uh, thank you very much for uh, being a part of Juniper Tree Ministries podcast. I'm going to pray for you guys and talk a little bit about an experience I had uh, a little over 20 years ago. Father, I just praise you and I thank you, Father, that you're an awesome God. I thank you, Lord, that you came that you died on a cross and that you rose again. So uh, most importantly, Father, that you you took the wrath of God upon yourself so we wouldn't have to experience that for all eternity. Thank you so much for what you did for us, Lord. I give you praise. I give you thanks today. I ask that you open our hearts to what you have to say. I pray that you just move in a mighty way in Jesus' name. In your name, Father. Amen. Love you, Lord. Uh, good evening, and thank you for tuning in tonight. And uh, I do want to talk about something that is interesting. Uh, it says in the Bible that our one day the old men will dream dreams, it says in Joel. Um, I don't know if it was a dream or a vision or what it was, but I experienced hell. And... I want to talk a little bit about that. I want to talk a little bit about hell tonight. Um, so the story begins where um, I had been saved for about a year. And uh, the Lord was preparing me for a big ministry that was coming forward. I was doing, I was working in the nursing home. I was doing uh, like weekly church in the nursing home and uh, helping people. Uh, before I was saved, I was actually doing church too, so my sermons got a whole lot better. Uh, but one night I was, I was at, I was, I fell asleep, and uh, I had a dream. I don't know if it was a dream or a vision or what it was, but it was a very scary part. And there were three parts that happened, and I want to go through each part. Um, the first part, I was falling. And I was like I was being pulled down. And as I was being pulled down, I was being pulled into darkness. And the scary part about it wasn't the fact, it, I mean, it was getting darker. It was getting really dark, uh, darker and darker as I was being pulled down. But there was this, this being afraid, this fear that was over me. And I remember as I was being pulled in, the fear got worse. And then the fear got worse. And I kept falling and the fear got worse and worse and worse. And I remember in this dream or in this vision that the fear got so intense that I couldn't handle it anymore. And then it got worse. It was a horrible experience. Now, at that point, I believe, I don't, I, I must have been, I don't know if it was because I was in my own body or what, what, what it was, but um, I blacked out. I don't remember anything after that until all of a sudden um, someone was screaming down the steps and said, are you okay? Are you okay, Michael? Are you okay? And I remember, like, in almost like a funk, saying, I'm okay, don't worry about me, I'm fine. And then I remember falling back asleep. It was a very scary experience. But then afterwards, I was sort of like, I just went back to bed. So the next day, the reason why um, the person was there, they were helping me get to work the next day. So I drove the, you know, they drove me to work because I was having car issues at the time. And they picked me up from work that day. And they said, Michael, what, what was going on last night? And I had said, I don't know. I was having some kind of bad experience. Like I felt like I was being, and I knew I was going to hell. I just knew it. If there was something in my spirit that told me I was going to hell. And that person said, the only reason I'm asking and the only reason I was so concerned was you were screaming at the top of your lungs. You were screaming so loud that I never heard anything like that. I thought you were dying. 
I didn't know what was going on with you. And then you just said, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'm okay. And I, you went back to sleep. It was a very scary experience. So how do we know that a dream or a vision or something like that is from the Lord? How can we know that? And I want to give you some really good advice. Uh, there's a, a prophet that was in my church. He was a great administrator, great prophet, um, someone who was leading four of our churches at the time in the Assembly of God. And I went to him and I said, can I talk to you for a little bit? And so we sat down. And I explained the, the, the dream or the vision that I had. I told him, this is what happened to me. This is what I experienced. And he gave me some of the really good advice, really good advice after experiencing this thing. He said, you know, Michael, I want you to pray. And we can do this. We can pray for confirmation. He said, it's either one of three things. And this is important. It's either something that was just out of your own consciousness. You were having a dream. It was out of your consciousness. He said, it could be something that the enemy was trying to do to you. Because the battlefield is the mind. And the devil works within the mind. His demons, his buck private demons, they work within the mind. Or it could be of the Lord. And the Lord is trying to wake you up and experience. Maybe you were supposed to experience hell for a reason. So I began to pray, and I began to ask for confirmation. And as I was doing that, um, one night, uh, my friends and I decided to go up for dinner to, there's a, there's a street up in Philadelphia, it's called South Street in Philadelphia. And at that time, there were a lot of cults and religious um, leaders up there, the vacuum cleaner cult, uh, Scientology, uh, Satanists, vampires, all different types of people witches, new age people. So I was up there that night and there was this burden, huge burden that I couldn't ignore. It was so heavy on my spirit that I said to my best friend, I was like, Chuck, I was like, I feel like I need to come here and I need to tell these people about Jesus and his love. I don't know why I just feel that way. And that started me on a ministry. Um, and I did street ministry for a number of years on South Street on Saturday nights. Uh, I would go up there with tracks, pass them out to people, tell them about Jesus. Um, the Lord just did amazing things during that time and those, those years that I was up there. But the confirmation that I received was, was that the Lord allowed me to experience that because he wanted me to understand that there are going to be people that will experience that for all of eternity. And, and it, it, it even to this day, it hurts my heart. It hurts my heart to think that if people don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, you know, I mean, there's the opposite side of that coin. You get to experience the awesomeness of heaven. You get to experience Jesus. You get to experience all the awesome things. No more fear. No more shame. No more guilt. No more pain. All those great things. And I really believe that part of hell, you know, we know that it's the wrath of God being poured out forever into that place. We know that it was never supposed to be for us to go there. But we do also know Jesus took that cup of wrath so we didn't have to, and we can accept that, and we can go to be into heaven and be with him forever and ever. When I, when someone passes away, and I got to experience a lot of that over the years when I worked in nursing home ministry. When they knew the Lord, it was a joy 
to understand that they were going to go and be with Jesus. I had one lady that, that she was awesome. She, lady of the, you know, she was a beautiful, wonderful woman of the Lord. And, you know, uh, that morning she passed away and I went in at seven in the morning. And when they found her, so cool. When she passed away, they found her in the bed. And I remember going to her bedroom and her eyes, her eyes were closed and she was like this. And her eyes were closed. And that's how she passed away. Her arms didn't even fall down. But she was just up like this, praising God. It's a beautiful thing. And then I remember another person that I kept sharing the gospel with. And one day he was up there flirting with the women and talking to the nurses. And then he went back to his room and he died. And I remember they were working on him. They were doing CPR on him. And I remember crying outside of his room. And I remember praying and saying, Lord, just give me one more chance. One more chance to tell him about you, Lord, please. One more opportunity so that he can know you. Please, Father, please. And the hard parts of that. Jesus talked more about hell in the Gospels than anything else. 26 times he talks about hell. There's a parable in the Bible where we see a rich man and we see Lazarus and the rich man goes to hell. He goes and he experiences the torture there. And I want to share this with you because I think it's important because, you know, like I said, Jesus shared about hell more than anything else in the Gospels. And I want you to understand something that's very, very important. When Jesus taught parables, he didn't use people's names. There's not one parable where Jesus says, and this guy's name was Bob, or this guy's name was Dave, or this guy's. But then he talks about the rich man and Lazarus. And he uses the name Lazarus. Which sort of tells me that he was talking from experience. That he had actually witnessed this take place. And... Heaven is real. Hell is real. If you don't believe in a hell, then you don't believe in Jesus. If you don't believe in Jesus, then, you know, fine. You don't believe in him. You don't believe in God. You don't believe in those things. Hell is a real place that people will go to someday. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14, it says there are two roads. There is a wide road, a wide path that leads to destruction. And there's a narrow road, and it says that a few will find that road. The wide path that leads to destruction in the Greek, in the language, it says the majority will find it. It breaks my heart to hear that. Because if there are 40 billion people that have passed away by the time the Lord returns, by the time we're judged in the Kidron Valley, what's the majority of 40 billion people? Definitely not 20 billion, that's half. 30 billion is not a majority. 35 possibly. It just breaks my heart. To think that people are going to go there. They're going to experience that for eternity. And it's not, they're not, Jesus isn't sending them there. They're not accepting him. They're not believing in him. 
And they will go there based upon the fact that whether they accept Jesus Christ or not. It's singular, emphatic. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said that, singular, emphatic. He basically says, I am the only way to get to heaven. I'm the only way to get to the Father. He even goes further in John 14, where he says that, he talks about a thief trying to get into heaven. And they're trying to go through different places, and they you know, try to hop over the gate, and they can't do that. Because there's only one way to heaven. We, as believers, don't want anyone to perish. I not only want no one to go to hell, I want people to experience heaven, to experience the glory. Revelation chapter 19 to the end. The awesomeness, the greatness of what God has in store for us. To be able to stand before him one day and to be able to give him a hug and physically say, thank you. I thank Jesus every day for saving my life. I thank him every day for saving my friends, for saving people. My, my, my pop-pop getting saved before he got to go to, before he died. You know, like him and I talking, him reading his Bible every day, getting to pray with him. It was a beautiful time to share with a relationship with him. And we talked about the Bible and we all these great things about the Lord. I want people to experience that. Because the Bible's clear. You know, Chuck and I, I was talking about Chuck earlier, we both went to Israel uh, some years back. And on our day off, we went to the Kidron Valley and we stood in the Valley of Judgment. They say that if you cut squares into the Valley of Judgment, you can fit 20 billion people in there. It says that God's going to gather us all in the Valley of Judgment one day. That he's going to separate us, those who knew him and those who didn't know him. Those who knew him, he calls them sheep. Those who don't know them, he calls them goats. And he separates them. And we're going to be there. And it says in the Bible, in Revelation chapter 19 to the end, it says that he's going to wipe the tears from our eyes. He's going to wipe the tears from our eyes. Why are we crying? Because right before that, he separates us. And this is for you, believer. We are going to watch people that we knew, famous people, probably presidents, dictators, people that we worked with, people that we went to school with, friends family. We are going to watch them be cast into the lake of fire. <sighs> I'm not saying that you know, like, I won't go as far as say as a pastor, because I've heard that before pastors say, your blood's on their hands. I, I'm not going to even say that. Like, they use easy, uh, scripture out of Ezekiel. But here, let me ask you this. Are you telling them? Someone told me, and I didn't accept it. Over 20 times I was told about Jesus, and I didn't accept it. Until one day. Someone shared with me, and I accepted it. I don't want to be in that valley someday and have someone from my family, someone who's my friend, someone who I worked with, come walk up to me and say, why? Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you share this with me? I'm going to go forever into a lake of fire 
and brimstone, where the worm never dies. And I'm going to go because you didn't tell me. We need to share the gospel. We need to tell people. Because if they're standing there and we told them, at least we shared. It's up to us to share, to tell people, and to pray. We need to pray that the Holy Spirit will change their hearts, will turn them to God, that their veil will be removed, and that they will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I experienced hell. I remember, and it's a sobering experience. I don't want anyone to experience that, let alone for a whole eternity. Please, will you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If you haven't, if you have, will you share him with somebody else? Oh, well, I'm too embarrassed. Oh, well, I'm too scared. Well, you know what? If you're too embarrassed and too scared, then one day they might come to you as we're standing in the kindred and say, why? Why didn't you tell me? It's too late now. It's too late now. Let's pray. Father, I just stop. Thank you for the sobering message today. Thank you for helping to remember how close we are Father, help us to have the Holy Spirit strength to share your message. Open up the hearts of people that they may come to know you as Lord and Savior so that they may be able to see heaven and one day not have to experience the full wrath being poured out forever. Would you do that for us, Lord? Would you give us opportunities? And I thank you and praise you for that in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. I hope you have a fantastic week.